Bob, who's the first traveler today in the beautiful college in Porterhouse of Hotel Sherman? A man with a real nice smile. Mm -hmm. He's a very interesting gentleman, Tommy. He's an author, and he also lectures on animals and circus life. I want you to meet Al Pretty from Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Al Pretty from Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Here's the WPN Day in Milwaukee. Hi, Al Pretty. Hi, John. Very good. Uh, you know about animals and circuses? A little, oh, yes. Yeah. How long have you been around these things? I had my first job on the circus in 1899. What was your first job at the circus? I was cage boy on the famous Boss Duck and Wilma Wild Beast show in Islington, London. A cage boy? A cage boy, yes, sir. Would you tell us about that job in London? Well, I must have been making good because one day they promoted me to uh, what they called a poverty boy. Well, that meant in those days I would have to go into the big steel cage with the trainer. Mm -hmm. and hand him whatever props to artists in order to use them in the act. And they move them when he's through. Now, is there anything you can tell us about the wild animals that we may not know? Well, yes, I believe I can tell you plenty because uh, uh, it's only those of us who have direct contact with animals who, in the working with them, that really learn to know them and know about them. Mm -hmm. After all, it's one thing to look at animals in a cage and quite another thing to work with that animal. And be in the cage. Oh, well, yes, of course, you have to be in there with them, naturally. Yeah. They wouldn't like it if you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> Could you give us an example of this, Al? Well, I'm going back to the first job I had when I was, uh, my first appearance in the cage with these lions. Uh, Jack Bonavita had 37 of them, and I was helping him, handing him props to use, chairs and so forth. What props use? Well, chairs and things like that, mm -hmm. and sea saws and uh, uh, tight rope. And in the middle of the act, the lights went out. Well, I could see through the semi-darkness with 37 pairs of fiery red eyes all looking at me. <laughs> they, those lions were getting close to me every second. I could almost feel the hot breath on my face. And I thought of all the mean things I had done in my 14 years of life. <laughs> <laughs> Wondering to myself if ever I would get out of that cage on end or at least alive. And then, just as suddenly as they had gone out, just so suddenly the lights came on again and nothing had happened. And there were those 37 lions going through their routine because their train had continued with their cues, which were given by sound. So nothing happened. <laughs> when, I <was> all through, <laughs> when I was all through that evening, back in my double cage, boy, Mr. Boss got the owner of the show, and the trainer came, and both of them patted me on the shoulder and praised me for my wonderful color. <laughs> Why, Mr. Bostock said, I'm surprised that a boy of your age and with your little experience with animals would have had the nerve to stand your ground as you did so wonderful thing. And all the trainer said was this. He said, you know, I wasn't concerned about my lions. I knew them. They knew me. We worked together for quite some time. But he said, I must admit that just for a few moments you had me worried. <laughs> I said, what was bothering you? Well, he said, I thought you might move and cause a disturbance. I told you, you didn't need to worry about it. I couldn't move. <laughs> <laughs> and in not moving, I had done the wisest thing possible. The chance I had, I moved. I would not be here now. It might or might not be a blessing. Who can tell? Now, <laughs> <laughs> which would you say is the smartest animal? <laughs> Without any question, the elephant. The elephant? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. They are the most intelligent animals that we have. They outrank the ape quite a little. I know it has been claimed for the ape that they are the nearest to human beings in intelligence. Mm -hmm. Well, there may be some human beings that uh, get rather close to the ape at times, but uh, <laughs> I would give that position to the elephant because he has one thing that the ape does not have, power of concentration. We know that an elephant will study his thing long enough to accomplish it. He doesn't leave it until he has accomplished it. Now, what would you say is the most dangerous animal? The black leopard. Why? Well, not because he is uh, necessarily ferocious, but you know, the ferocious of these wild animals is mainly caused by their fear. Oh, really? Oh, yes. They're very timid. And the black leopard is very highly strong, very nervous. He's always on edge and always ready to protect himself. You write books, don't you, Al? Oh, yes. I've written quite a few books. Would you give us just a couple of titles? Mm. Well, the first book I wrote was The Way of the Circus. Uh -huh. And the most recent one called Not So Dumb, which treats with the question of can animals think. Another one I'm writing now is called Continuous Performance. It has to do with my life from the time I started in show business until today. How old are you, Al? 
<laughs> I was 14 years old when I got my first job. Now you figure it out. And that was an 18 with? 99. <laughs> Lesson for you at the buttery of the Ambassador West Hotel. Now, uh, Tommy, what do you say we dress up this traveling man when he comes? Right, Robert. Let's start with a hat, first of all. A resisto, self-conforming hat from Lipton. And you like a smart pair of men's floor shine shoes. And how about six of the famous Marlboro shirts and Marlboro dress and sports models from the Marlboro Shirt Company of Baltimore, Maryland? And to go with them, a colorful assortment of superb silk ties. There you are, Mr. Alberti, from the Commonwealth of Texas. We've learned a great deal from your being with us today, and please stop in and see us the next time you're in Chicago.